guys? Welcome to How, How to, to Start. Start. I'm Lauren Francesca. I'm Brad Grunberg. And we're here with Steve Hofstetter. Yes. Did I say that did right? Did I into the right camera? You did say it right. <laughs> Good. Funniest Good. guy around, baby. Yeah, Steve is hysterical, and I've been following him for years now, actually. Thank you. And I just wanted to get a stand-up on this couch to, to tell us all how to to Ironically. Be, to be a stand -up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so tell us, how, how did Steve start? Uh, the first thing you have to do is have a crippling fear of failure. <laughs> uh, and after that, have no other marketable job skills. And if you combine those two, that's a recipe for a comedian. Um, I actually tell people, uh, do not do stand-up comedy unless you have no other options. Like, if you feel you have to do it, that's when you do it. Because uh -huh. even if you are wildly successful, it's still such a slog. Yeah. And it still just takes so much. But the actual answer, how to start. Um, and there, where did you start the whole? whole so I night? started in New York, uh, fellow Queensite, yeah. right? Yeah, represent Queens. All what right. part of Queens are you from? Uh, I'm from Briarwood. Okay. Uh, which is uh, a little a little part of Queens that started as uh, like United Nations housing and then just became kind of low income housing. And oh. it was incredibly diverse. It was crazy diverse. Like, Queens is the most diverse county in the country, and Briarwood is the most diverse neighborhood in Queens. Wow. So I remember getting together with, like, some people I went to elementary school with, and we were talking about, oh, how's this person, how's that person? And, like, every name we said was, you know, like, oh, how's Lee Koo? Hey, have you heard from Velen? And, and it was like, oh, wow. just, you know, my best friend growing up was a mall. It, it was just like, you didn't have, there weren't many Steves. You know, I was the Were Steve. Were you the only Steve? I was the only Steve. Wow. Uh, no, there was also, there was another Steve, but uh, his last name was Gomez, not Hofstetter. Oh, yeah. So, oh, yeah. we all know Steve Gomez. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, I was, uh, I was like one of two white kids in my friend group, which was kind of cool because speaking of starting with comedy, getting a whole bunch of different perspectives on life, I think does right. help a great deal. Sure. Um, but yeah, I started in New York, which is a terrible idea. <laughs> Uh, I do not recommend it. I, I think the best way to start as a stand-up is you start somewhere to get good. You move, And this is only Ameri the American scene, obviously. But you start yeah. somewhere to get good. You move to New York to get great. You move to L.A. to get famous. Oh, that's and great. if you do it out of order, yeah. it's going to be a lot more difficult. Sure. Okay. Um, that's good advice. That's great. Well, you need, like to be, you need to be competent first because when you're starting out in New York, you are, you know, you're, you're, even if you get to the point where you get to call in avails for stage time, yeah. David tells also calling. Yeah, you know? yeah. <laughs> so, so like, who gets bumped? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, I met a kid in Cleveland once who was, you know, telling me about how he wanted to move to New York, and I said, "That's awesome. Are you the best comic in Cleveland?" And he was like, "What? Well, no." Yeah. And I was like, "Well, then why would you leave?" Yeah. Like get it, when when Dave Chappelle comes to Cleveland, do they say? Oh, we need to get Scott or whatever his name was. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, no, they don't. Yeah. So wait till you're that before you go swim in a much bigger pond. Yeah, be the big fish in the small pond, then you... Or at least one of them. Yeah, you would think, yeah. Yeah, you know, don't be... Yeah. yeah. What it, what is even happening out there? I think that wait, wait I think out. I think that Scott from Cleveland. Oh, Scott from Cleveland came in. <laughs> there he is. Yeah, he's, he he moved to L.A. You know, he, he took my advice he to move to New York. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and and the way to start is um, most commonly is open mic. Sure. Um, I actually started as a barker, which is a fairly unique thing to New York. Huh. So a barker is that person who hands out flyers. You know that asshole? Yeah. Oh, that guy? Oh, yeah. wow. Is that the guy in Vegas hates? here? Go, like the guy in Vegas who says, here, go to this, uh, yeah, it's, this show? It's uh, that, but not for strip clubs. Oh, okay. It's, <laughs> that, it's that, but for, but for like, marginal comedy. So, oh, so, oh. so were you on the street in Times Square, like, asking people, like, do you want to go out? And you have to do, like, the two-drink minimum and all that? It was even worse. Oh, I no. was, so I started barking for these independent shows on my campus. You, how old were you when you started? I was 23. Okay. So I started, I did improv from the time I was 13 through the rest wow. of wow. school, if you want to know the full story of that. Where did yeah. you do improv? My book, Ginger Kid, explains it all. Um, <laughs> I did improv Cunningham, in my high tell school. Tell us the story, in my high school. Yeah. Uh, I, there was an improv uh, club in my high school. I was very lucky to go to a school that you know nurtured the arts. Um, Lin-Manuel Miranda was there. That's uh, amazing. And do you Chris still keep Hayes in touch there. with him? I haven't spoken to Lin since I spoke to him a little bit after In the Heights, uh -huh. uh, you know, just as a, you know, hey, congratulations, you're doing oh, great kind of thing. Nice. Um, and then once he got, like, 
like world famous, world famous, it gets a lot harder. You know, the, so, the message button on Facebook disappeared, and like that's how we talk. Oh, okay. So okay. like then it's like, all right, well, you yeah. know, I don't know his cell number. No cell or. Um, yeah, yeah, but I do. I I have seen uh, I have seen Chris Hayes. I uh, saw him at at my reunion. We were in the same grade, and then. Oh. We actually ran into each other in Vegas in unfortunate circumstances. Mm -hmm. uh, he was covering the shooting and I was performing that week. Wow. Which wow. was insane. Oh. But it was also very nice in such a horrible, horrible circumstance to run into a friendly face. Somebody which who... Which was, yeah, which was that, yeah. that was, you know, helped things a little bit. But uh, not to completely be a horrible buzzkill. <laughs> uh, so yeah, the three of us were in a play together, which was weird. Anyway. Um, so, but at, to back to the actual thing, so starting in stand up, I, so I passed out flyers, um, for this indie show that we did at the underground lounge, which is now I think called the, like the West end something, uh, 107th and Broadway, which is, uh, seven blocks from where, where I went to college, which is bad because I was a year out of school or a couple months out of school. Oh boy. And so I'm standing there in nine degree weather just handing out flowers on the street Aww. and like oh uh, and this girl i had a huge crush on of course she like did. walks by and she's like i heard i heard you were doing doing comedy you're handing out flyers and i was like well we all pitch in you know just <laughs> we let all, me lie real quick we, we, all, pitch in. we all pitch you know in, then the man. boss comes out and be like hey it's enough talking <laughs> hand out flyers all right but the great thing about that was that like i lost all fear and all uh you Humility, know, just, everything. Just, absolutely. Yeah, yeah it was. Great. You're completely vulnerable out there, and yeah. so, and not only that, but you have to get really quick because you have two seconds to sell a show to somebody. Do you think that's what the the, the comedy managers are doing? They're just like training you guys to like just be rejected. No, I think they're taking advantage of us. But <laughs> uh, the training happened. You know, there was a little bit of wax on, wax off. Yeah. But yeah. Mainly, yeah. they wanted their car waxed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, no Mr. Miyagi anywhere, right? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. yeah it was. Uh, you know, it was. It was made, but. But at the same time, the basic idea was, once you can do more sh more for the show with your comedy than you can do for the show with your flyers, you don't have the flyer anymore. Right. It's kind of like, a, like you, you, it's like boot camp in a way. You yeah. take care of that, and then you move on to this. Yeah. yeah. You. The the fact of the matter is, is comedy like any other art form is a business, mm -hmm. and so if you cannot sell tickets with your act, you need to be able to do it another way. Okay. And so when I first started, it was flyering. The three ways you start in New York are either barking, bringing, or open mic. Oh, bringing wow. is the worst one. Bringing is one I do not recommend to anybody. That is a thing. It is such a predatory practice uh, where they say, all right, you bring 10 friends to this show uh, and you know who, who all buy $20 tickets and who buy two drinks and who never want to speak to you again because it's a horrible <laughs> show. It's horrible, yeah. And you basically, and there'll be like two or three professionals scattered on the lineup. And then the rest will be bringers, uh. and it's so you're basically like, hey, get your friends to sit through 90 minutes of garbage, right, right, or 70 minutes of garbage with 20 minutes of respite, and pay for it, and pay for <laughs> it, um, and we'll give you, you know, a couple of those minutes, and it's yeah, wow. it's a horrible practice, but it is how some people start. But yeah. I also think it's bad for someone to start that way because you're playing to an artificial crowd, you're playing to people rooting for you. Mm. If you play to people root for you, who root for you, it's not real. Yeah, the reason yeah. I liked barking was because it was the only thing that allowed me to work for stage time. Open mm. mic in New York, you pay five bucks, you go on. There's no real audience, and you're paying for stage time. So how oh. long did it take to get to the point where you didn't have to do that? Because yeah. I know that's what everybody out there yeah. wants yeah. What to was know. The, what was the one moment? I think life is all about time. Yeah. Luck, timing, but time. What was that one moment for you where you're like, all right, now I'm a comic. The first moment for me was when I turned down someone's couch to sleep on to pay $35 for a motel. And I was like, I made it. I can buy my oh. own horrible motel room that I'll get murdered in. Oh, uh, will, what city was this in? Uh, this was in, uh, in right outside of Dallas, Texas. Oh, wow. That's yeah, great. Yeah, I remember it very, very well. And whenever you're in Dallas and you pass that motel, you're like, big smile on your it's face. The, oh, that motel was condemned years ago. Oh, it was. I, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, it was crack house, yeah, but hey. Exactly. Ooh, Every time okay. I buy crack from that motel. <laughs> um, yeah, <laughs> it was, is the type of motel where like there was one that <laughs> I... Family friendly. I know, family yeah, friendly. friendly. I, I actually uh, kind of rate my career based on the type of hotels I stayed in. Okay. And so, like, there was, you know, there was the the first year of it where it was like beg, borrow, and steal to sleep anywhere we can, you know. Okay. Then there's the second year where it's like, okay, mostly couches and some of these roadside garbage motels. Okay. And then eventually going up to like 
and you count a lodge with a coupon. You okay. Know? In between there is the comedy condo somewhere in there. Well, the, yeah, the comedy condo is unfortunately a recurring thing in all oh, aspects of the career. What's the comedy condo? Oh. The comedy condo this is, is interesting. Yeah. So okay. <laughs> oh boy. I know. Uh, it's actually the comedy condos that exist now are much better. Okay. But yeah. it used to be that, and occasion, and there are some clubs that still have it. They would have this rundown garbage apartment. Horrible. Oh. Horrible. Yeah, usually like, you know, two or three bedrooms so that, y you know, you're forced to stay there with whoever you're opening for or is opening for you, which is rough. Um, and you know horrible things have gone on in that place for yeah. the last three decades or however long it's existed. And let's say the, the cleaning crew hasn't come in. Yeah, yes, exactly. Right? Oh, yeah. Wow. Or the cleaning crew has come in, and that's even sadder that it still <laughs> looks like that. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. There was there 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 have been a couple where I was like, no, I'm not staying here. Uh huh. Um, you know, I will. Ra I'd rather lose money on this gig than stay here. Wow. Um, and lately now, where the industry has become more celebrity driven, because it used to be you open up the doors and you sold out, mm -hmm. and that's not how it is anymore. Right. And so now the celebrities kind of dictate how they're treated. And so the celebrities don't stay in the comedy condo. They, no. you know, this type of hotel and, you know, et cetera, et cetera, this biggest suite and for my entourage and, you know, all that mm -hmm. stuff. Sure. So it is no longer profitable for most clubs to operate a comedy condo because they can only use it half the year because half the year they're buying I hotels see. for celebrities anyway. Uh -huh. Right, right. But now with Airbnb, they're kind of back. Oh. Oh, yeah, they're, they're back uh, because they have the comedy condo, which they use for part of the year, and they Airbnb it when someone's I see. Let's, oh. let's get yeah. back to how to be a stand-up. Okay, yeah, sorry. <laughs> um, <what's, laughs> how to be a stand-up. Lower your standards so you're willing to stay in comedy <laughs> condos. I mean, before, they, before they get to the comedy yes. condos, how are some ways, like, how did you come up with your set? Because you have to have, like, a 10-minute set or a 15-minute set. Yeah. Like, how do you... Absolutely. Yeah. So... You know, you start out, most of the opportunities you're going to get in the beginning are, are five to ten minutes. And so what you what I recommend people do is whatever length set you're going to do when you first start, write three times as much as that, and then take the best third of it. Okay. Um, also, write like words cost you money. Like it used to be for newspapers, where literally they were they were like, this article can only be 200 words. Strike out as many words as possible. Do that in your set, because if you can tell the same joke in one minute instead of two minutes, yeah. you have another minute to tell another joke. You have another minute to get more laughs, to get people to like you more, etc. Um, the other basic writing tips I give people is uh, only use details that change the story, but do not leave details out that change the story. So, Can you give us an example? An example, yeah. okay. <laughs> uh, you're writing a joke about someone who is wearing a blue shirt, okay. all right? Is the blue shirt part of the story? If no. it's part of the joke, if you're doing a joke about the shirt, yeah, you need it. If you're not, who cares what color it is? Let the audience picture whatever the hell color shirt they want. You just mentioned that they were wear, you know, in that shirt or whatever it is. So something like that. Um, when people start to give extraneous details, especially when someone's writing about like, oh, here's a story that happened in my life. You right. know, and they're like, oh, and then my cousin came in, and then they said, it's like, well, did that change the story? Story, right, right. You, then your cousin doesn't exist. It doesn't We don't care about your who cousin. Who cares about your cousin? The only right. person who cares about your cousin is your cousin. Right, and right. And that's a very small percentage of your audience. Actually, when right. you first start, that's half your audience is your yeah. cousin. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> you write the brings, the yeah, brings, yeah. Yeah, exactly. You write, you have to write concisely. Um, and then the other thing is finding a point of view, finding a voice. The biggest thing in the beginning is figuring out what, what type of comic you are. But how do you do that? So uh, you, you try and you fail miserably. Uh -huh. Oh, and that's a very important thing. Everyone sucks when they first start. Everyone, right. no matter how much of a legend they become, everyone sucks when they first start. People who suck the most are the people who don't think that they suck. Right, right. So I yeah. tell people, embrace the suck. Your job when you start is not to get laughs, it's to figure out how to get laughs. Right. And that's right. very different. And so, you know, babies don't walk the first day. Right. Uh, doctors don't start with open heart surgery. Right. You know, you go to med school first. Right. You so, got, you, like learn. you said, you, like the audience needs to know, you have to graduate from this, the university of failure until, until, you, until you make it in life with Absolutely. anything. Absolutely. So did you yeah. bomb when you first started? Did you ever bomb? <laughs> so anyone who says they didn't bomb oh. is someone who's always bombed. Always bombed <laughs> and, and is still bombing. Right. Right. I, my first set went well. I prepared for it a whole lot. My second set, 
I was good at ad-libbing why it wasn't going well, and then that got laughs. So I literally said the words out, out into the universe, and the universe heard them, and oh. they smote me. Oh. Uh, I, I like said that. the words, I guess I can't bomb, because I thought I could be so funny about bombing. The third show. Oh, the third show. Oh, boy. The third show, I got off stage in under a minute. You know how bad you have to be wow. to realize? Under a minute? To realize 50 seconds in that you're like, this isn't going to get any better. Oh this is God. not going to And I just way. bailed. I oh bailed. My God. Oh, wow. Where yeah. was it? Where was that? Uh, the Underground Lounge, that place oh. where I started. Oh, yeah. Oh, the barking, I'm sorry. where you're barking in front the of The guy oh. who was up after me was so mad at me because he oh. wasn't ready. He, oh, he wasn't, oh, you know, yeah, he, yeah. he was in the other room. He was getting a drink, yeah, you know, yeah. and he had to, like, rush on mm -hmm. stage, stage, and it was uh, terrible. Did the host come the, out? Was there, like, a host that yeah, came MC out? Yeah, MCs like, usually has to carry that time yeah, until and, the next guy, but uh, he wasn't very good yeah, either. It was, it, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, it was really it's rough. All right. um, yeah, but the, 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 and so how do you find your voice is, um, I, I like to do, tell people to do this exercise where you ask five people who know you really, really well and five people who barely know you at all to describe you in one or two words. And take what repeats in those descriptions, and that's how people see you. How you see yourself doesn't matter. How you see yourself might determine your actions, um, but your actions determine how people see you. And you exist in the world how everyone, how the sum of everyone sees you. Right. You exist on stage how the audience sees, sees you. you. So you can influence how they see you, but that, that doesn't mean you can control it. And so you need to know who you are and then write toward who you are. Because when I was first starting, when I did that exercise, uh, the things that people said about me where they said, okay, you always have to be right and you're a people pleaser. And those two things conflict with each other. You don't have enough time to be complicated up there. So I got rid of the people pleaser part. Oh, and wow. I started writing from the perspective because about 85% of my set was the I'm right, you're wrong, I hate you. And so I just wrote from that, that, that and that's kind that of what became your on stage. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. So you were just able to just cut it out? How did you just do that? Uh, just... I failed a lot. Okay. I, right, you know, right. I was willing to fail a lot. You kind but, of had to figure it out. Yeah. But the time I failed the most was when I started writing toward the laugh. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I was a better comic in 2008 than I was in 2011 because I started touring more and I started playing all these like strip mall comedy clubs and I was writing toward the lowest common denominator. I was trying to get, you know, and so the whole room kind of liked me. Mm -hmm. And I realized that, like, that's not who I am as a comic. And when you write to what is important to you, and right. what is important to you could be politics or it could be, you know, the inaneness of everyday life. It doesn't matter. It's just write what matters to you. Right. And once I started doing that, my crowd started coming to me. Oh, and totally. no one drives two hours to see someone they kind of like. Right, right. Wow, so you have to divide the room. That's that's awesome. So how long have you been doing comedy to date? I've been a professional stand-up for 17 years. Wow. That's, wow. That's a long yeah. time. Wow, I would never look at you. You're a young man. Good I, for you, my I appreciate 17 that. I years. Years. No, I'm kidding. Uh, I can <laughs> say totally, it, yeah. George Hamilton no, products I'm, you're I'm using. I'm 39 on. years old. All right. Um, yeah, I, but I don't look a day over 37. So I would I really say I would, I would say that. 36 yeah. and a half, but you yeah, can tell just well, round it off. Double. Yeah, I would say you're clean shaven. Awesome. Yeah. Wow, that's that's amazing. And um, just if you could share any tips to anyone out there before we wrap this up, what do you think? What are your um, like, biggest for tips? For people who want to be a stand-up, um, there's no substitute for stage time. Uh huh. So um, stage time, really, you think stage is the time, biggest? Stage time, stage time, stage time. But there's also no substitute for actually living life. Mm -hmm. and okay. You have to find a middle ground. There's this ethos right now in these kids coming up who are like, oh, I did 37 open mics this week. And it's like, great, when did you have time to write a joke? Right, right. Like, when did you have time to live and do something you could write a joke about? Is your whole act about being a comic? Sure. <laughs> so yeah. go out and live, you know, live. go to dinner, have, make some friends, you know, sure. go play mini golf, have, who cares? Some like, stories, just right. Mm -hmm. Do something. And that said, yeah. also don't slack off, and also, you know, get on stage, but don't make that your whole life. There's two questions I have for you. One is okay. what we do on How to Start is, what was the first job you ever had before? Like, you worked at Subway. What was that first job? And then the follow-up, what was the greatest moment in comedy to date for you? You opened for, you know, Sebastian or somebody yeah. that you always admired, the greatest moment for, for Steve-O. What is it? So, so what was your first job? Uh, my, first, my first job... Well, even better, my last job before I became a comic. Okay, that's great. So my last job before I became a comic, I was basically the head 
RA at a college program for <laughs> high school students. I love it. And I got fired for what they called a pattern of mean-spirited humor. <laughs> Which I was thinking of naming a special that. Wow. Wow, that yeah. is a good idea. Or a book. What's, yeah. what, what college was it? Can you uh, say? So <laughs> it was it was a program called CTY, uh, Center for Talented Youth, and and the campus we were at was Skidmore, but there were Skidmore. Yeah, but there were a bunch of other. No, uh, it, it was just there were these programs. There are these programs all over the country. They have like different campuses, and that's sure. just the one I happen to be based uh, at because I lived a couple hours from there. Okay. Uh, yeah, because it's you know upstate New York. So you got in trouble for that. I got in trouble for How mean were telling too many jokes. What they was, were not. Was like, they were not mean. What was like a mean joke that yeah, we well, yeah, well, okay. give, can you give say the one? That really, the one that my yeah. boss hated the most yeah, they, was gave you your walking so, papers. So my boss was very. Uh, she was very kind of out of touch with the high school kids, and I was, or, or it wasn't even the high school kids. It was like the freshmen, sophomores in college who were like. The I guess the RAs that we're gonna teach the high school kids, and so she she was doing this lecture on appropriate clothing to wear, uh, you know, as a staff member, and her example of like something you shouldn't wear was she's like yeah you know because if you wear like a, a, and by the way this was in 2004, okay. Uh, so okay. she goes uh, if you wear a you know coed naked T-shirt then they might, you know, the kids might be like, where can I get one? And I said, the 1990s. Oh, okay. And then, you know, and they all laughed. <laughs> That's and funny. then I said, yeah. And then I said, for real, what you do is go home after this, take everything out of your wardrobe that might be inappropriate, put it in a separate pile. Because that way you won't grab it if you're tired in the morning, you won't accidentally put it on. Smart. That was the first thing those kids wrote down all day. <laughs> and I got fired. Not. I don't think I got fired because the joke was too mean. Yeah. I got fired because they listened to me and not my boss. Oh. She got jealous. It was an upstage. Yeah. Oh, thing. got it. Yeah, got it. Got it. So, so upstage. Yeah, yeah. There was and there was another <laughs> one where uh, my the other head RA was got very very insulted. Cried over this apparently. Uh, I made her cry uh, because oh, no. someone walked oh, in the office. <laughs> someone walked in the office and said really panicky and was like, I, I have no idea what I'm doing. And I go, don't worry, neither do we. What's up? Uh, and my co-head yeah. thought I had I had no faith in her abilities by saying oh, we didn't know what we were doing. On. I was like, I'm just, I'm being nice to somebody. I know, being you're, you're making him feel, yeah, making him feel good and comfortable. Yeah, yeah. it's like, oh. sit down, let's talk, you know, et cetera. So, I'm so wow. glad that happened to you. You yeah. found your real calling, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And what was the greatest moment in comedy for you Greatest today? moment in comedy uh, had to have been, this is so dumb, but no. do you know who Natasha Henstridge is? Yeah, of course. She so, was on the Dice Show, right? She plays wife. Uh, she uh, was also in Species. That's oh, where yeah. I know her oh, from. Okay, okay. She was the gorgeous woman in Species. Yeah. Uh, Burnett, right? Uh, she was blonde at the time, oh, okay. in that movie at least. Okay. I have I no idea she is, before yeah. or since. I just know her from, from Species. From that Species, okay. So uh, she was dating, she was dating Harlan Williams at the time. Okay. And so she came to the improv with him. And uh, after the show, I went over to her and I was like, because we got introduced, and I was just like, and I never fan out at all, but like, <laughs> I watched Species when I was a teenager, and she was yeah. gorgeous, and yeah. and I said, you know, uh, I have to be honest, I'm I'm a bit of a fan, and she goes, me too, great set, and I was oh. like, I have nothing else to say to anyone in the world now. <laughs> Give me some yeah. love. That oh, is that was, oh. Yeah, that was really cool, and I'm sure she does not remember that moment at all, but it is just <laughs> for ingrained you. Yeah. for kinda me. Kind of like on this show, we had Charo, where you're, where you're yeah. sitting, yeah. she kissed me. That's my Charo moment. Charo kissed you. Yeah, she, well, I made her, I, like this, I turned my face, she kissed me on the lips. But you don't understand, growing up as a kid, yeah. uh, a lot Your of... Your dream was to one day mildly sexually assault Charo? It kind of, sort of, yeah, on the show. Yeah, I mean, it, it made all the sense because of all those lonely times I spent in my room. You know? yeah. Anyway, guys. Anyway, anyway guys. family friendly, it's, family friendly. All right, yes. Um... We have to wrap this up. Unfortunately, this is really yeah. awesome, but I'd love to, to keep talking about this. But uh, last uh, advice I want you to give the audience, because I know the, the number one reason people don't do stand-up, which is part of the reason, like, I've done stand-up before. Yeah. I've done, like, I've done it a bunch. But sometimes you get really scared, like, terrifiedly yeah. scared. And sometimes, like, when you bomb or you don't do well, like, you don't want to get back on that stage. Like, do you have any advice for, for people on how to get over yeah. bombing or get over stage fright? Because also people are public speakers and they just, they hate getting the, the only thing that'll get the bad taste of a, of a bad set out of your mouth is having a good one. Right. Um, <laughs> so if you don't get on stage, you're just going to be stuck on that other one. Um, but also, know that it doesn't matter. 
I've done over 4,000 shows now. Do you think there's one of them that I'm just like, oh God, that one didn't go well. What do I do with the other? Someone messaged me and was like, afraid of their first show, and they're like, what if I don't do well? And I said, oh no, is all of Hollywood gonna be there? <laughs> right, exactly. Is right. everyone you've ever met gonna be there? Are they broadcasting it to the world? No, right. then shut up and go bomb in front of strangers. Absolutely. Who cares? Who yeah, cares? It Those strangers matter. don't. They're gonna leave there, and they're not even gonna remember that you existed, which is wonderful. Toil in anonymity as long as you can, right. till you get, get good enough that they will know your name. Absolutely, and everybody goes through it, not even in comedy, but in life. And mm -hmm. yeah. just get right back up, dust yourself off, and move on. No one is good when they first start. Yeah. Uh, Seinfeld had a really good point. He said, the problem is that with comedians, there's no title change. There's no executive comedian. There's no, you just, you're comedian the first day, you're comedian yeah. the day you retire. Right. And there's n nothing changes in between. And people make the mistake of thinking that that first day is the same as the last day because they have the same title. But it's not. It's okay that you're evolving. It's okay that you're growing because that is how it works. Mm -hmm. Seinfeld did pretty good, huh? <laughs> uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. But well, Steve-O yeah. is doing better. To wrap better. this up, guys, because <laughs> we have another guest here. Yes. Uh, what are you working on now? I know you're going to Australia for a tour. Yes. Um, what are you working on that you want to promote that we should have people go follow? I know you're Steve Hofstetter everywhere. Did I get that wrong or right? Uh, no, you no. got it okay, right. Okay, you're okay, so okay, worried good. about my last name. Okay, well, sometimes I get, I get, I get names wrong. Uh, it's, yeah, um, you can look me up on all kinds of social media. I have a pretty big YouTube page. I have almost a thousand videos on there for free if people want to check them out, including my last two specials are free on my YouTube. Um, and my new book, Ginger Kid, is a uh, top five pick on Amazon. Oh, and wow. came Wait. out number one in its category. All right. That's so, amazing. yeah, and that's a true story. Speaking of starting, that's a true story. Going through high school, getting bullied a whole lot, and finding comedy as a way out. So, uh, if anybody ever feels like they don't fit in, or someone in your life is going through something like that, uh, please pick up a copy and, and I hope you enjoy it. And if you do start from this, you know, if you watch this and this is what gives you your start, <laughs> I want, you see me in a comedy club a decade from now, I want you to come over and tell me that. I, I love will, it, man. And I will give you a big hug. Or they could, back. Go to your, they could go to your Facebook page or your Twitter a absolutely. or anything. Absolutely, yeah, at, is Facebook, it Twitter, Instagram, Steve all Hofster, at everything? Steve Hofstetter. The Hoff, baby. It's, Anybody yeah. called you that in your life? Uh, yeah, and then freaking David Hasselhoff took it, <laughs> oh, and I was so annoyed. Oh, bigger and better than him. Hoff long before he <laughs> yeah. ever decided to be. Oh, he could have been, he, 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 yeah. he wasn't that for so long. Exactly. Forget I'm going to hop with one F. There you go. And last question, when you get <laughs> yeah. back from Australia, what are you, what are you going to do? Uh, do you have uh, stuff planned? Do you yeah, have a show coming I, I out? Have, uh, uh, I have a bunch of other tour dates, um, tons of stuff in LA, uh, New York, Kansas City, uh, Naples, Florida, um, wow. Columbus, Ohio, all, everywhere great. in between. Um, but also, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm working on a new show that I can't announce yet oh. because it hasn't been announced in the trades. Uh -huh. um, <laughs> and uh, I have a, a, a nice little role in, uh, in another movie coming out next year. That's great. So, yeah. yeah, you're really awesome. working. So just, uh, just stay tuned to all my social media and you'll get all the updates. Nice right. hand for Steve, man. Yes, Thank guys. you. Hey, thank, thank you, buddy. you Bye. so much for watching How to Start. I'm Lauren Francesca. I'm Brad Grunberg. Do me a favor, guys. Comment down below. What are you? scared to start I want to know tell me right now in the comments make sure you give this a thumbs up if you really really love me download this on iTunes and give us five stars please 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 five yes, five, 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 five 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 and make sure to follow my friend Steve Hofstetter everywhere he's amazing and he's just really funny he's like super super funny. and a super nice guy yeah thank you really nice. is that is that my phone all right all right, sorry. Okay, sorry, guys, get the phone. all right we'll I see you next you. time peace how to start bye 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 Jeez.